working budget presentation. Uh, my name is Alessandra and I'm a housing counselor at Habitat for Humanity East Bay Silicon Valley. Um, I'm going to skip this one because this talks about handouts sending them to you. This is when we do our own presentations, but I know Danny has um, uh, uploaded those handouts, so you have access to those. Uh, now, before we get started, I would like to tell you a little bit about who we are. Uh, Habitat East Bay Silicon Valley is a nonprofit, and we serve people in Alameda, Contra Costa, and Santa Clara counties. Now, um, our organization is a HUD-approved housing counseling agency, and we offer a range of programs um, and services that help people achieve financial fitness. And in, they include one-on-one -on -one counseling, financial education workshops, like the one we're presenting today, online financial education, and for some home buyer classes. With one-on-one -on -one counseling, we offer free individualized guidance by a HUD certified housing counselor. And this is available to anybody who would like to learn how to manage the personal finances, including how to create a sustainable hustle budget, uh, balance income and expenses, starting a savings plan, manage debt. Uh, we also offer credit counseling that teaches how to build or rebuild a positive credit history and uh, home pre-purchase counseling. Uh, that's to help understand how the home buying process works and how to become financially ready to purchase a home. Uh, we offer many types of financial education webinars uh, on a lot of topics. We offer them uh, uh, through our website and also by uh, working with partners like the Santa Clara City Library. And we teach the HUD approved for some home buyer class. And uh, in addition to being HUD approved, we also a HUD approved housing counseling agency. We also offer affordable home ownership opportunities. Uh, we build new homes and we renovate existing homes and then we sell them at an affordable mortgage to qualified families with limited and moderate incomes. And we also offer home repair services. So if you want to learn about all our programs, you can visit us at www.habitatebsb.org. But today we're going to be covering the following. We'll talk about money values and personalities creating and managing a budget. Uh, we'll go over some budgeting tools and strategies, and then we'll talk about how to set smart financial goals. Now, we don't all make financial decisions and handle money the same, and that's because our personal experiences growing up influence our future attitudes about money. We acquire learned behaviors from outside um, influences like our parents, family, society, culture, and these learned behaviors and values shape how we handle money as adults, and they can lead us to making good or poor financial decisions. Peer pressure also has a powerful impact. For example, you know you shouldn't spend money going out to dinner with your friends because that's money that you want to add to savings, but everybody's going, and so you rationalize it and think, you know, I can just add a little extra next month, except then the following month you don't, and so you fall behind on your savings goal. So take the time to reflect on what money means to you and what drives you to make spending and saving decisions is an important step towards gaining control over your finances. It will help you put controls on poor money management habits that stand in the way of reaching your goals. So do a little self-analysis and ask yourself, what are my personal goals? How do my emotions influence my spending and saving decisions? Why do I spend the way I do? Uh, what contributed to how my values were formed? Which learned behaviors lead me to making poor financial decisions? And what are some strategies I can adopt that will help me avoid them? And which learned behaviors lead me to making good financial decisions? Um, you wanna identify these because they are the ones that you want to draw from. As a result of these outside influences, we develop financial personalities. So let's review some of them. The frugal spender spends as little as possible and always looks for a bargain before making a purchase, uses only money that's available and uses credit cards only for emergency expenses, keeps records of spending and follows a budget. The status shopper believes that money helps create a positive image. So spending more than they can afford is justified. Um, spending decisions are influenced by the latest trends and buys with the intent to gain approval or to appear successful. The resourceful consumer looks for the best deal and researches options before making spending decisions, spends money on things that matter most to them, keeps a close watch on finances and follows the use it up and then throw it out. And if re replacing the item is not a need, 
than do without it philosophy. Uh, the carefree consumer believes there's no need to follow a budget, doesn't like keeping track of spending, believes you can go along, um, get along without having a saving security net in place, has a, I see it, I want it, I buy it now mentality and fear of missing out, and a carefree attitude about the consequences of overspending. Somehow the bill will get paid, things will be fine. And last but not least, the impulse shopper has a hard time saying no to purchases and may justify the purchase because the amount is small or because it's on sale, does not like to wait to get things and thinks that the new purchase will bring happiness, likes to shop for fun and is easily swayed by sales pitches or peer pressure. So ask yourself, which personality do you most closely identify with? Now keep in mind that we typically are a combination of more than one, uh, financial personality, but usually one emerges as the strongest. And knowing which one you are helps you set goals for yourself, be mindful about how you approach money, and learn which tendencies you have that you may want to be cautious about. Now, do you know where your money goes each month? How often have you taken cash from the ATM, maybe $20, $40, and at the end of the day, not know where it all went? Or ask yourself why you can't save more? or feel like you're always trying to keep up with your bills and expenses and can never find a little extra to reach financial goals. Now, there are uh, many reasons why we don't budget. So here are some common ones. I'm too busy. It's too complicated. It causes too much stress. I know where my money's going. My income and expenses are irregular. My family won't be on board. Now, if you don't budget, you won't know where your money's going. And if you're spending more than you think uh, you are or should be, um, then ultimately you won't. And you risk struggling to pay for essential expenses like rent, having to borrow by using your credit cards to help pay for expenses, and then quickly finding yourself into debt and being unable to save and vulnerable to financial crisis due to unexpected emer an emergency expense or increased living costs. So think of your budget as your spending plan, a plan of how you choose to spend your income. It's a powerful tool that puts you in control over your expenses and allows you to have a clear picture of your finances. A spending plan helps you live within your means, save so you're financially prepared in case of an emergency, like a job loss or like an unexpected car, car repair expense, plan for and reach financial goals, make smart spending choices and avoid or reduce wasteful spending and avoid getting into debt. Now, before you start working on a spending plan, you need to have a clear idea what your goals are. This will help you stay motivated to committing to a budget. So think of your goals and write them down. Some you may need to reach to ensure financial security, for example, building an emergency saving or saving for retirement, or you may need to save for a down payment on a car because the one you have is on its last leg. And without a car, you can't get to work, which means your ability to earn will be impacted. And some maybe goes for fun things that you would, like, you would like to do, like taking a trip. Now, once you have a list, put them in order of importance. Goals that ensure your financial security should take priority. For example, if you have little or no money in an emergency savings, you risk finding yourself in financial trouble should you have an emergency um, expense or loss in income. If this was your situation, building an emergency savings then takes priority over saving to go on a trip. To help you put controls over wasteful spending and ensure that you put your money to good use, you need to also define and prioritize your spending priorities. Determine which expenses fall under needs, which fall under wants, and then put them in order of importance. Now, needs are your must expenses that are needed for your basic survival. And these include those that help you stay housed, like rent payment, mortgage payment, um, expenses that help you live, like utilities and food, expenses that protect your income earnings, like transportation costs to work, childcare. Um, these also include legal obligations like child support, alimony, student loans. And that's because if you don't keep up with them, your wages will be garnished and your income potential will be impacted. Your wants are your would like to have expenses, things you don't need to live. They are quality to your life, but you can survive without them. For example, you know, the obvious ones like going out to eat and going to the movies, out with friends, 
but a need expense can also become a want expense. For example, you need a cell phone, but if you add features you don't need, then those extra features become a want expense. You need clothes, but other than making sure you have the basics, any extra piece of clothing you purchase becomes a want. Now we need to have some things we enjoy in our lives, so it's not about eliminating all want expenses. It would also not be sustainable, and it might lead you to give up or over overcompensate, but it's about choices. So knowing which matter most and least to you will help you identify which you should reduce or cut altogether if you need to balance your budget or free up money to help you pay off debt or add to savings. And as you go through this process, write all this down so that you can refer to it as you work on your spending plan. To be able to create a spending plan, you need to have a clear idea of how much money you bring in each month and how much is going out. So first get organized. Gather your income documentation from all income sources, jobs, tips, child support, alimony, benefit payments, tax returns, and profit and loss statements if you're self-employed. Then list all your expenses and monthly debts you're paying off, like credit cards, loans, and then next to each write the monthly payment or cost. Think also of those expenses that come a few times a year, like your car registration. Now use this information and calculate your total monthly net income. Net income is your take-home income. That's the amount you earn or receive after all deductions are taken out, like tax payments, health plan, and retirement contributions. This is the amount you want to use because it is how much you deposit in your account and what you can count on to cover your expenses. If your income varies, perhaps you're paid hourly or are self-employed, calculate what you earned on average in the last three months. If you're self-employed, remember to deduct any business-related expenses, including the income taxes that you will have to pay. And then calculate the monthly costs uh, for all your expenses and debt payments. Your credit cards use the minimum payment that you must make based on the balances that you're carrying. Our expenses fall under different categories. Fixed expenses are the same each month. For this reason, they're easier to plan for and calculate. They include things like rent, car insurance if you pay it monthly, loan payments. Because they're fixed, you don't have control over their costs, so you must make sure that you can cover them. Saving also falls into the fixed expenses category. Um, you should commit to adding a percentage of your net income to savings every month. And then there's variable expenses. These change every month depending on how you use them. For example, utilities, groceries, gas, even credit card payments, uh, which are based on the balance that you carry. These are harder to track, but you also have more control over them. And if you need to balance your budget, you may be able to adjust some of these costs. So to calculate a monthly amount you should budget for, you can do an average of what you spent in the last three to four months and then use that as a baseline. Discretionary expenses are your wants. You have full control over these costs. They include obvious things like eating out, um, but also other things that you may not necess necessarily think about like subscriptions to streaming channels, music apps, fast food. Uh, periodic expenses are those that don't require you to pay the bill or cover the cost every month, but you need to make sure you have enough money available when needed. You may have control over some of them. They include things like car insurance, back to school costs, holiday spending, gifts. And if you're self-employed, they also include money you need to set aside to pay income taxes. Now, the best way to prepare for these expenses is to save a little every month. For example, let's say you pay $600 for your auto insurance every six months. You divide 600 by six and you put $100 in savings every month. You're not paying now, but putting the money away so that you have the amount you need when the bill or expense becomes due. If you don't plan for these expenses, you risk not having enough money when you need it and then resorting to using credit cards to cover that cost, which can lead to getting into debt. And cash expenses. These tend to be small, regular purchases like coffee, bottled water, snacks, fast food. We think they don't add up to much, but they do. And if you don't track your costs, you won't have a realistic picture of where your money is going. These expenses typically fall under once and you have full control over them. So to implement a spending plan, you need to be organized and keep accurate records. You can use a calendar, a spreadsheet, a ledger, a notebook, whichever system you use is up to you, pick one you're comfortable with and that you know you'll stick to. 
So for example, you can use a payment calendar to keep track of when bills are due and make sure you have the funds to cover them. You know, write the amount of your net pay on the calendar date when you receive it, then write your bills on the dates by which you must pay them to make sure the payment's received on time. And then look at each bill's payment date. Will you have enough money available to cover that cost? And if not, to help you prioritize them, look if there are bills that have more flexible due dates before the payment's considered late. And to make sure you don't forget to make a payment when you pay a bill, cross it out on the payment calendar. To help you stay on top of bill payment due dates, you can create a bill payment file, a small box with dividers for each day of the month or an accordion file folder. When you receive a bill, look at the due date, place it behind the divider label with the date by which you must pay it to make sure the payment's received on time. And then at least once a week, check the file and pay the bills that are coming up. And then when you pay a bill, you move it to a divider label paid. For cash expenses, you can organize them in envelopes labeled with the name of the expense. The envelope system works great to help stay on budget for want expenses. So for example, if your monthly eating out budget is $100, you put $100 in an envelope, and then when the money's gone, spending stops until the following month. If you have access to a computer, you can create a spreadsheet customized with your bills and expenses. There are lots of free templates online that you can use, and some even include formulas to help you keep track of totals. So a budget is unique to you, and it's a two-step process. Before the month begins, Using the information you gathered, you take on your take on pay um, and all your monthly costs, you create the upcoming month spending plan, how you will spend the total net income that you expect to earn that month. As you work on your plan before you allocate any portion of income to expenses, decide first on an amount you want to add to savings. Instead of figuring out how much you can save, you decide how much per month you want to save. This is called pay yourself first. It means that saving comes first, not last, and you make it a priority. Just like you pay your landlord, your cell phone provider, uh, your car loan, you pay yourself an amount of financial security and helping you plan for the future. And then subtract the amount you added to savings from your net income, and then distribute what is left to your priority expenses first. These include your need expenses, you must make sure these are covered because they're needed for your survival. Your fixed expenses, because they're harder to adjust, you need to make sure these costs are covered. Your debt payments, because if you don't keep up with them, uh, you'll risk legal and credit consequences. And a saving amount that goes towards covering the costs of your periodic expenses, those that come a few times a year. And now you can calculate your discretionary income, also known as surplus income. This is how much you have left after adding to savings and paying your priority expenses. Now, how much of this surplus income you should use toward one expenses depends on your financial situation and the financial goals that you would like to reach. So if, for example, you have high credit card debt before allocating any amount to once, apply as much of it as needed to help pay you off credit card balances faster. But creating a budget is not enough. You also must uh, track your expenses throughout the month to make sure you're staying on track with your uh, spending plan. You may need to do this daily, weekly, bi-weekly, depending on your situation. You decide, but just don't wait till the end of the month because if you went over budget, then there will be nothing you can do about it. Yeah, we're, um, we're gonna take a, a little break now to go over a quick knowledge check and. Um, you can um, chime into the um, chat box. Um, so what are, uh, question number one, what are the financial benefits of creating a spending plan? How does creating a spending plan help you? I reviewed some of the, some of the benefits. Any thoughts? You can put it in the chat if you uh, have any answers for Alessandra. Can I give it a, oh, there you go. Helps you save money. Absolutely, yes. You're able to save. What else? Right, uh, keeps you from overspending, right? Um, 
it uh, and avoid wasteful spending. Um, pay off debt. Maybe, yeah, you can find money that helps you pay off debt. Save for retirement, save money. Um, yeah, make sure you know what has to be paid. Save for a trip, even, yes. Um, um, and then ultimately, it allows you to live within your means. Um, provides a projection where you stand financially, yes, absolutely. All right, question number two. So based, um, oh, we haven't gone over this yet. So uh, what are the first steps you should take before you create a budget? So there's a couple of steps that you should go through before you even start creating a budget, which also we call your spending plan. Create a spending plan. Yes. Um, what can you? Yes. So you you have to know what your fixed expenses are. What other expenses are there? Gather your bills. Uh huh. Allocate a portion of your monthly income. What kind of spender are you? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, first. First, I think of that. Um, so then that will um, help you create a spending plan um, more tailored to you. Um, so um, yeah, so absolutely. So get organized, uh, gather all your information, expenses, income, mm -hmm. and then, uh, and then uh, start allocating. Um, and of course, uh, start with uh, allocating money to savings. Um, okay. All right. Let's um, thank you so much. Great answers. Let's move on. Okay. So um, you want to put your spending plan on in writing. Um, and so you can keep a, a track of how much is coming in, how much is going out, if there's enough income to pay all your expenses each month, and if you have available surplus income after paying all your priority expenses and debts. So here's a simplified example of a monthly income and expenses worksheet. Categorize your expenses as fixed or variable. You could also include a want category to help you keep unnecessary expenses separate from the high priority ones. And this will make it easier to identify the ones you want or should reduce. And then to help you stay on top of your bill payments, include columns where you track when they are due and when you paid them. Now, based on this example, um, this person's net monthly income is $3,500 and their monthly expenses total $3,380. So that means that they have $120 left in surplus income at the end of the month. This is the income they can use to reach financial goals, maybe add a little extra to the monthly savings amount or save for a trip. Tracking expenses will help you see if you're staying on track with your plan and give you time to readjust if needed to ensure that you end the month budget positive, meaning obviously more comes in than goes out. And it also helps you identify wasteful spending and see where every dollar you spend is going. So to help you keep track, um, keep a spending diary and record every dollar you spend. And here are some good practices. Track expenses by category. Uh, the more in detail you go, the more in control you will be over your finances. For example, for the food category, separate it into groceries, eating out, snacks, drinks at the coffee shop, et cetera, to help you use receipts because they itemize what you buy. Uh, they show you where you're spending uh, the, your money in detail and help you identify your spending patterns. So let's say you go to the grocery store and you buy toiletries in addition to food. By looking at your receipt, you can track these two categories separately. You can also use expenses tracking apps. Um, banks offer tools that help you track spending habits. Uh, do make sure though, if you use these tools um, that you are careful with whom and how you share your personal information. As you track, pay close attention to any spending leaks, where you're spending more than you thought you should, for example, if you have a habit of grabbing coffee, calculate how much this habit's costing you, track how much you spend per week, and then multiply by 52 to see how much you're spending per year, and then divide by 12 to see how much it's costing you per month. And then ask yourself, is that the best way uh, to use your money? What could you do with that amount if you cut or reduce that expense? If you find that you went over budget, calculate by how much, then adjust expenses for the rest of the month as much as needed. For example, let's say you allocated $250 for groceries for the month and on week two, you find you already spent 
and you still have two weeks to go. So that means you'll need to review your other expenses to see which you can cut to free up money that can help you cover groceries for the rest of the month. Maybe you decide that you will not go out to eat for the remainder of the month and then use that amount um, that you allocated for that expense in, um, to, towards uh, covering groceries costs. But don't stop there. Understand why you went over budget on groceries. Did you make poor, for uh, poor food spending choices? For example, maybe you bought food that you threw away. Throwing away food is the same as throwing away money. You paid for it. Uh, what can you do to make sure you only buy what you need? Uh, or maybe uh, you un underestimated this cost. And if so, which expenses can you reduce to free up enough money going forward? To identify your spending leaks, look carefully at your want and variable expenses. Here's where you will likely find them. Also, these are the expenses that you have more control over and where you can more easily adjust spending. So on a spreadsheet like these, uh, list your want and variable expenses, and at the end of the week, calculate how much you spent on each. To help you more easily identify those that should be reduced first, identify which are needs and which are wants. And as you list them, keep the expenses types as separate as possible. By breaking them down, you will be able to see where every dollar is going so that you can see all the areas where you can save. So first look at your want expenses because these are the easiest ones to reduce. For example, if this was your spending tracker, you would have discovered that uh, each month you spend $80 for coffee, $60 for snacks and $160 to go out to lunch. So you might decide to still get coffee but stop buying snacks and also go out for lunch two days a week instead of four. And by cutting these two expenses, you're now saving $140 a month. And then next look at your need variable expenses to see if there's any you can reduce. For example, maybe you can turn down the thermostat in winter by one or two degrees to save on energy costs. As we saw in the previous slide, regular spending habits add up over time and can have a significant impact on finances and ability to save. The costs are typically low so low that you may use cash because they don't show up on your credit card or bank statements, you're also likely do not track how much you're spending. So think carefully about regular purchases and activities that you enjoy daily, weekly, and then calculate how much they're costing you over time, monthly and then yearly, and chances are you'll be surprised. So uh, identify which fall lower on your list of priorities. Are there some you can eliminate? Keep your financial goals in mind as you go through this thought process to help you stay focused on all the possible savings you can find that can be put to better use. So let's say you learn that you spend $15 a week buying snacks. You run the total and find that it's costing you $780 a year. Uh, you also realize that you're spending $4 five times per week on a latte at the local coffee shop. You add it up and this regular habit is costing you $1,040 a year. You think uh, eating fast food four times per week doesn't add up to much. On average, you spend $10 each time, but you calculate the cost of the expense over time and you find that it's costing you $2,080 a year. So here's what you can do differently. Uh, you can bring a snack from home and save $780 a year or $65 a month. You can invest in an insulated mug and brew coffee at home, which you purchase in bulk for an average of 20 cents per cup and you're now saving $988 uh, a year or $82 a month. And you can cut back on the times you go out for lunch to twice a week instead of four, and now you're saving $1,040 a year or almost $87 a month. By making these small adjustments, you are now able to save an extra $234 a month, which adds up to $2,808 per year. And that's a lot of money that can uh, go towards helping you reach your financial goals. Now the 50-30-20 budget gives you a guideline of how you should allocate your monthly take-home income based on uh, this budget. Need expenses should not exceed 50% of your income. No more than 30% of your income should go towards one expenses. At least 10% of your take-home income should go towards savings. And no more than 10% should go towards monthly debt payments like credit cards and loans. After you have created your spending plan, keeping in mind the 50, 30, 20 budget, look at how you're spending your monthly take-home income. 
What percentage is going towards adding to savings? What percentage is going towards paying needs? What percentage is going towards paying wants? And what percentage is going towards paying uh, debt payments? And then analyze your findings. Is too much going towards wants? Are you paying too much per month towards debt obligations? Are you adding too little to savings? Is, if this is your situation, then you'll need to adjust your spending percentages and how and by how much is based on your financial situation and goals. So for example, based on the spending patterns from the discretionary spending tracker example we just reviewed, this person spends almost $600 a month in discretionary spending. Things like eating out, coffee and snack at the local coffee shop, manicures, going to the movies, etc which based on a monthly net income of $3,500 is 17% of their take-home pay. 17% of this person's income is going towards paying for one expenses. Now, if we look at the 50, 30, 20 budget, this percentage for one expenses seems low, but really depends on this person's financial situation and goals. For example, if most of their income is going towards need expenses and debt payments, they may not be able to afford to spend 17% of their income on wants, or maybe they have financial goals they want to reach and need to keep one expenses to a minimum. So if you need to adjust your spending percentages, the wants portion of the 50, 30, 20 budget is the one that should be reduced first, as much as needed to make sure you can cover your needs, add to savings and be able to keep up with your debt payments. But what if you find that your expenses exceed your monthly take-home income? Or maybe you learn that you have very little surplus income left at the end of the month, or you're spending too much on wants, debts, too little is going to savings. So if you need or want to free up money, you must look at all your expenses carefully and identify all the ones you can adjust, even just a little. So to help you get started, refer to your list of wants and needs and their order of priority. So start with your non-essential expenses. How many can you eliminate or reduce? You'll be surprised at how many you can adjust. If you free up a dollar here and a dollar there, it can add up to a lot of savings. Small changes matter. Spending $4 less per day adds up to $120 per month or almost $1,500 a year. That's a lot of money that can help cover a high priority expense like rent, health insurance, car insurance, or can help you reach your savings goal faster. Are there memberships you don't need or use, like subscriptions to movie channels or streaming services, gym memberships? Can you reduce your going out to eat cost, drinks from the coffee shop, eliminate the home phone, get rid of cable? And then look at your essential expenses. For example, look at your cost for groceries. Which strategies can you adopt to help you reduce it? Maybe you can make a weekly meal plan that's based on coupons on grocery deals you find. Are there bills you can lower? For example, can you renegotiate your cell phone contract, maybe change to a lower cost data plan? Price shop for services you receive. For example, review your car insurance. Can you shop around and get a better rate? If you have a good driving record, you may be able to lower your current rate. Or you could look into increasing your deductible to lower your monthly payment. Of course, you want to make sure that you have enough to cover that deductible should you need it. But reducing expenses may not be enough and you may need to find a way to bring in some extra income to make your budget work. Can you work overtime? Periodic income like seasonal work or temp jobs can help you pay down debt or add to savings. If you don't work full time, can you take a side job? Maybe services like yard work or teach a second language, tutor. A few hours a week can help bring in enough to help balance your budget. Or could someone in your household who's not currently working take a part-time job? If you have children who are old enough to work, could they take a weekend job, maybe babysit or pet sit for a neighbor? And then the money they earn, they can, uh, can go towards helping pay costs like going out with friends, their share of a family cell phone plan, and the money you save on allowances can go towards paying down debt or add to savings. Can you sell items you don't need? The proceeds can help you pay for one-time expense like a car repair, help you pay off debt, um, so you can free up that monthly payment. Financial obligations and goals can vary throughout the year. That means that you will need to revise your budget from time to time. How often depends on your situation. If budgeting is new to you, it's a good idea to revise it every month uh, for four to six months or until you get a good financial sense for all your costs. 
If your income varies, for example, you're paid hourly and don't work the same number of hours every week, or you get an extra income that varies from month to month, like tips and overtime, to stay on top of your finances, you'll need to create a new monthly spending plan more often, even monthly. If your income barely covers expenses, even after trimming all you can, then you need to revisit your budget on a monthly basis. Always prioritize savings, needs, and debt payments. It may mean that on some months, you'll have to put one expenses on hold. Life is also unpredictable. Financial circumstances may change. If your income um, decreases, then you need to review your budget and adjust your spending to ensure that you can still add a little to savings every month, keep up with needs and debt payments, and then the month cash flow positive. If your income increases, congratulations, review your financial goals. Can you put that extra towards savings every month or use it to pay off debt faster, reach financial goals sooner? If your expenses increase, maybe you had a child or your rent increases or you need to get a new car and the monthly payments higher. You will need to review your budget. Can you afford this increase? If not, which other costs can you reduce to make sure you don't spend more than you earn and that you can still save? If instead your costs decrease, maybe you finish paying off your car loan and that monthly payment frees up, how can you best put that extra money to use? Um, the financial goals may, uh, may and often do change. You may decide you want to pay off your student loan debt faster or plan a trip to visit family. So before giving up on your other goals, look at your expenses. Can you cut up some, um, some to free up some extra money? If you find that you're using credit cards more often to help you cover expenses, you need to revise your budget and determine why, what has changed. Um, maybe you started going out to eat a little more often or picked up a few daily habits like uh, coffee, or you're going over your budgeted allowance for one expenses. So look carefully. A little more spent here and there adds up to a lot in the long run and can really impact your budget. So once you identify the problem or problems, then trim and eliminate as much as needed to make sure you can cover all your expenses with your monthly income um, without going over budget. Once you have clearly defined and work in spending, a work and spending plan, you can start planning for financial goals. Goals can be divided into short-term, mid-term, and long-term. The short-term goals require less time to achieve, typically within a year. They can also be goals you can achieve right away. For example, I'll start adding $100 to savings this month. Midterm goals involve thinking a bit further into the future, perhaps the next one to two to three years. Long-term goals typically require more than three years to achieve and longer-term planning. They can seem overwhelming. So to help you stay on track, you can divide them into shorter-term goals as you achieve them you'll see your progress, which will help you stay motivated and keep going. So for example, let's say John has three credit cards with balances and very little in savings. His long-term goal is to have all three cards paid off and the six month emergency savings within three and a half years. So based on his financial capabilities, he creates a plan that includes short, mid and long-term goals. So within a year, he'll have paid off one credit card and will have built a one month emergency savings. He also will set up an automatic transfer to savings starting the following month. And these are his short term goals. And then his midterm goals are to pay off the second credit card within two years and build a three month emergency savings within 18 months. And his long term goals are to pay off his last credit card and have a six month emergency savings in place within three and a half years. Now, goals must matter to you. You also must make sure that you can uh, realistically achieve them. So first identify them and write them down. Then determine if they're short, mid, or long-term. Then identify the steps you need to take to be able to achieve them and put your action plan to work. Review your progress regularly. You can do this monthly, quarterly, whichever interval you think will help you stay on track. And if you find that you're not making the progress you would like on a goal, then reevaluate your plan and make changes as needed. So for example, there are expenses you can, are, are there expenses you can reduce so you can save more per month? Your goals should be smart, which means they need to be specific. What do you want to accomplish by setting this goal? Why is this important to you? Is this something you really want or need? They need to be measurable. You need to be able to quantify your goal. How much do you need to reach it? What specific actions must you complete to achieve this goal? They need to be actionable. They need to be realistic. Is this a goal you can reach based on your situation? 
Your goals don't need to be easy, but should also not be impossible. And the action you want to accomplish need to be sustainable. So if they're not, um, you'll just end up giving up on your goal. And they need to be time bound. Uh, they should have a clearly defined time frame. When will you reach your goal based on what you're able to save per month? And this will also help you track your progress. So here's, let's look at a smart goal example. Um, so Sarah, Sarah has no savings she can rely on. This causes her a lot of stress. So she wants to build an emergency savings. Her goal is to have three months of net income saved within two years. And her monthly take home pay is $3,000, which means she has to save a total of $9,000. So she divides 9,000 by 24 months and calculates that she has to save $375 a month to reach her goal. So she just finished paying her car loan. Sarah decides to start adding the $200 monthly payment that freed up the savings she needs to save an additional $175 a month to reach her goal. She reviews her budget and finds that by cutting back on going out to eat and uh, coffee runs, she can save $100 per month. And she was also able to renegotiate her cell phone plan and reduce her monthly cost by $75 a month. So one thing I'd like to point out is here, Sarah's um, using um, a combination of strategies. So uh, that car payment uh, that freed up because her car loans paid off, she's putting it to good use. Um, and so she's um, using that to help reach her goal. And then she uh, is doing a combination of cutting back on kind of want uh, expenses, going out to eat, coffee runs, and also renegotiated a cell phone plan. So to find savings, it's not necessarily just doing one thing, but it's, a, you know, if you do a combination of things, a little bit here, a little bit there, then it all adds up. Okay, so let's see if this is a smart goal. What does Sarah want to accomplish? She wants to build a three-month emergency savings, so it's specific. Why is it important to her? Because not having emergency savings causes her a lot of stress. Specific, again. How much money does she need to reach her goal? $9,000. It's measurable. What specific action does she need to complete uh, to reach this goal? She has to save $375 a month. Is this goal reachable? Yes. The monthly car loan payment that freed up and the expenses she reduced allow her to save $375 a month. And will, will she reach her goal in two years, uh, which is uh, the timeline that she has set herself um, for reaching this goal. Now, as she works to follow her savings plan, Sarah can set shorter term goals to help her stay on track. For example, set up automatic transfer to savings. She can use strategies to help her reach her goal faster. For example, for birthdays and holidays, instead of getting more stuff, she can ask for gift money and add it to savings or add a tax refund. To help her stay on track and motivated, she can monitor her progress. Seeing the balance grow will help reaffirm that she can reach a goal. Sarah may also run into setbacks, maybe an emergency like a car repair that forces her to dip into her savings to cover it. So to help her catch up with her goals, she can try to find extra savings by selling items she doesn't need, or she could revisit her budget and find additional expenses she could cut back. In the end, the goal has to be reachable and realistic. If her circumstances change, and your original goal is no longer realistically reachable, then she can revise it. Perhaps uh, she could also stretch out her timeline and build an emergency savings in 30 months instead of 24. So let's review some budgeting tips. Um, for most of us, budgeting doesn't come naturally. When you first start out, it may seem overwhelming. It's a skill and habit that takes time to develop. So here are some tips that can help you get started and stay on track. Break down the initial process into smaller steps. Before you start working on a budget, get your financial information organized, gather all your income documentation, list expenses and debt payments, then categorize and define your expenses, which fall under wants, which under needs, which are fixed, which are variable, then calculate their costs. Start with fixed expenses because these are easiest to calculate, then calculate your variable expenses. Look at the last three months of bank and credit card statements, then calculate the average costs, and then put all this in writing using a system that works for you and that you're comfortable with. 
Involve your family and go through this uh, as you go through this process for your spending plan to work. Everyone must be on the same page. It's called a household budget for a reason. You're not alone in this. Include children. You'll help plant the seeds so that when they're adults, they'll have the skills needed to manage their own money successfully. And if available, include a spending budget for each family member. Um, spending limits uh, define expectations and help everybody stay on track. If your budget's not working, it's okay to adjust it. A household budget must be realistic and sustainable. Otherwise it is bound to fail and you may end up giving up altogether. To make sure you don't pay bills late and end up being charged expensive late fees or that you spend the money on something else and risk not having the funds available when needed, adopt a system that helps you keep track of their due dates and pay your bills right away or set up auto pay. Remember to allocate an amount that will go to savings every month and set up an auto transfer to savings, just as if you were setting up an automatic payment for your rent, your credit card, or utility bill. There are budgeting apps that can help you track spending, remind, uh, remind your bill is due, or alert you when the funds in your checking account are low. Your bank may offer them. Uh, again, be careful with whom you share your personal information, and then only use them when you're connected to a secure Wi-Fi. If you're having trouble getting started or sticking to a budget, uh, consider reaching out to HUD Certified Housing Counselor. They'll provide step-by-step -step guidance and can help you create a sustainable balanced household budget, learn money saving strategies, create a plan that's based on your personal financial situation and that will help you reach your financial goals. All right, let's do one last uh, quick knowledge check. Um, so we reviewed, um, Types, different types of expenses, um, which are the ones that you may have control over? Um, and again, you can chime in into the um, chat box. Which expenses may you have more control over? Variable, perfect. Um, which other ones? You're welcome. Um, also discretionary uh, needs. Needs um, uh, needs if they're not fixed. So the, the uh, discretionary entertainment, absolutely. How about your cash expenses? Those you have total control over because typically those are just things you don't need. Um, so fixed to fix expenses you don't have control over. Um, so those are those are the ones that um, that you really must make sure that like your rent, there's nothing you can do about uh, your car payment. There's nothing you can do about those would be example of fixed expenses. Um, um, OK, um, let's see. Question number two. Great, great, um, great answers. OK, why is it important to allocate an amount of savings before allocating in income to bills and expenses? Why should you do that? Any thoughts? And if anybody remembers what that's called, we there's there's a there's an we call it we call it in a specific way. Um, if you remember, I mentioned this a little earlier. Well, so um, with savings, um, the um, it's important that you allocate before you start uh, uh, paying, you know, allocating any of your income to um, your expenses is because it ensures that you will add the savings. If you wait to just spend first and save later, you're not, your chances are you're not going to save, you're going to end up spending that money that you could have saved. But if you adopt, I save first and I spend later, um, then you'll uh, ensure that you're saving every month and you will find a way to adjust expenses. And you don't have to start. I know the 50, 30, 20 budget tells you that you should put at least 10% of your net uh, per month in um, savings, but you don't have to start with 10% if you're not comfortable with that. Even if you start with $20 a month, um, $40 a month, start with something that you're comfortable with. Just get in the habit of saving and then you can always increase it. Maybe you put as a goal to increase that amount until you get to 10% of your net. Um, 
why is it important to track spending? What, what are some, um, what does uh, tracking spending helps you with? Any thoughts on that? So you create a spending plan, right? But then you also have to track throughout the month. Why do you have to track your spending throughout the month? What can that help you? How can that help you? Budget, know where uh, you can make adjustments. Uh -huh. It gives you knowledge and control of expenses. Absolutely. To ensure, to see where your money's going. Mm -hmm. It would also, by the way, if you're just starting out with the budgeting, um, by tracking, um, you know, after, you know, three or four months you're tracking, um, you're going to start seeing patterns and it's going to help you create an even more um, realistic spending plan. So it's also really, really helpful when you're just starting out. Uh, make sure you have money for important things, right? So if you're saying, um, yeah, and it gives you time to readjust, right? So if you see that on week two, you're going over budget on a category, then it gives you time to readjust. So um, uh, it ensures that at the end of the month, you don't end up having spent more than you brought in. Um, and of course, uh, somebody mentioned, helps you see where every dollar your, your spending is going, helps you identify wasteful spending. Um, so helps you do um, a lot of things. All right, thank you. Great, uh, great answers. Happy that um, looks like, um, uh, I'm happy to see that the information, even though I kind of sped through this, um, that it was, um, it was, you know, absorbed. Um, I, uh, I think Danny, Danny is going to share an evaluation uh, link um, with you at some point. But um, what this is, this is a, a, our own evaluation form. It's anonymous um, and uh, it's your opportunity to let us know what you thought of this webinar and also um, things you learned, things we, we did well, things that we could do better. We read them, we, um, uh, they really help us uh, always uh, improve our presentation. So we uh, really value them and we greatly appreciate it. If you could, um, you do just follow the link, fill out the form, click submit, and then that's it. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. included it in the chat. So if everybody uh, could check out the link, save it later. Uh, and fill that out for uh, okay awesome. that's awesome thank you um i also wanted to tell you about our online financial education center now this is a, a free financial education resource that's available to 24 hours a day seven days a week uh and you can ask access from your computer mobile or tablet and it has all kinds of uh, short three to ten minute lessons that you can take on all kinds of personal finance topics like budgeting retirement planning, home ownership, banking basics, loans, credit reports, credit scores, and a lot more. And, uh, oh, you're very welcome, Julie. Uh, and you're also able to create a personalized playlist that's tailored to your unique financial goals and priorities. Um, you don't have to create an account. It's totally free. You don't have to create an account. Um, you would only create an account if you wanted the system to remember your progress. Um, so if you log out, log back in, um, you would be able to see which uh, lessons you had completed, which you need to still complete, but you don't have to do that. And um, uh, I will uh, maybe um, if I stop sharing, I will uh, put the I can put the um, uh, the link uh, to our uh, fin uh, financial education center on the chat box so that you all um, can just. Um, um, can go visit it on our and um, and and I can take uh, questions now. Um, while people are gathering their questions, there was one just a simple question asked in the um, Q and A mm -hmm. box, and then uh, the attendee asks, "Will there be a PowerPoint file available?" As for the recording, they ask, uh, "I'll I'll have that available if you wish. Uh, please contact me at the library, and I'll I'll send you that link for today's recording." But will there be uh, uh, files for the PowerPoint that you presented, Alessandra? Um, I can send those to you. Uh, I can send that to you. I can send you a PDF of the PowerPoint. Would that awesome. work? Yeah. So if anybody wished to have these power, the PowerPoint, and including the recording, 
uh, I highly suggest to email me. I'll put my email once again in the chat so that you have that. And if you wish to have uh, the recording and the PowerPoint, uh, I could then uh, send that to you once I have it available. Okay, yeah, I'll do that. And I just uh, put the, um, the, um, uh, the link to our financial education center on the chat box. And I will also put my, um, uh, my email uh, in case anybody is interested in one-on-one counseling. Um, so if you're interested um, in uh, working one-on-one -on -one to uh, learn how to, you know, maybe budget or save or manage your, you know, debt payments or uh, even improve credit, uh, rebuild, improve credit, um, reach out and we can talk about what um, your goals are and how we can help and then we can go from there. Any questions about anything that we covered or? No? Oh, I just uh, shared it, did that? Um, here, I'll share it again. Nope. Is not. your, is your set to, uh, sent to everyone, Alessandra? It's, uh, oh, I see. Yeah. It was uh -oh. Set to, uh, uh, oh, oh, you know what? Let me. Yeah. Here's the financial education center. <laughs> I, <laughs> Apparently shared only with uh, Danny. And then here's my uh, um, my email. There you go. And uh, yes, you, everybody can see the links, right? And the email. Okay. Any other questions? No? Well, I hope you all learned something. I know that there were a bunch of you that said you were somewhat familiar with budgeting. Um, so I hope um, if you were somewhat familiar that you learned something um, new that you didn't know before. And, um, and of course, everybody else too. Um, Oh, good, Julie. Thank that. That's um, really good to know. Thank you. Thank you for for saying that. Well, everybody. Also, uh, we'll be back in, I guess, two months uh, with another session. Um, I think April twentieth. Balancing income and expenses. So, if you found uh, this informational uh, webinar with Alessandra very uh, good education and that it helped you. Uh, stay tuned to our uh, next event in two months. Uh, check the calendar. Uh, but uh, Habitat for Humanity does a lot of great programming here at the Santa Clara City Library. So uh, check out all the other offers as well. Um, yeah, I'm happy to be presenting in a couple of months. And, uh, um, and I hope to see you all there. Any last words, Alessandra, or uh, you think we're all done? <laughs> um, no, I think that's uh, that's it for me. If nobody else, if nobody has questions, then um, yeah. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us for this session this afternoon. Um, I'm glad you learned, took home some tidbits of how to, you know, mm -hmm. save a little for the future and maybe a rainy day and more. Um, you know, this is all education once again. This is to help you and our community. Uh, we have a lot of materials that can supplement uh, these sessions, as well as contacting Alessandra at Habitat for Humanity East Bay, Silicon Valley, if you have questions or like to further your education in this matter. Uh, but this recording will be here. So remember to contact me if you wish to have it, but uh, contact me regardless. I'm your librarian, I'm here to help. And thank you, Alessandra, for the session. Thank you, Danny, for hosting me. It was a pleasure and it was nice. Um, meeting everybody <laughs> please everybody have a great day and we'll see you at the next one 
Have a Take great care. day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.